So Evolve is a game that has been pretty anticipated by a lot of people. It certainly wasn't Destiny or Titanfall levels, but people were excited for this game. I know I was excited for this game at least. But now that it's out, how well does it hold up? Let's take a look. From a mechanical standpoint, I love Evolve in every way. I love the mechanics of this game. It's a multiplayer-centric game, but with a definite emphasis on teamwork. One player is a highly powerful monster. The other four players are human hunters, each with their own special abilities and equipment. These play out like different classes in any other multiplayer-based game. The gameplay is very asymmetrical. The monster is more powerful than any one hunter player on their own, but in a group together, the hunter players can work their abilities off each other to take the monster down. And it is definitely a game that emphasizes teamwork. You've really got to stick together and play your abilities off of each other. An individual hunter caught alone by the monster will not stand a chance. They will go down. So the game definitely requires more teamwork than most do. This results in a really great setup that's a lot of fun to play with, especially if you can get a group of friends together. While playing as the Hunters is a very teamwork-oriented affair, playing as the Monster is the exact opposite. You are completely alone against the human players. You play as one of three different types of monsters, and the game does a good job of making them feel different both as the player controlling them and as the player fighting against them. Each of the different types of monsters feels unique. You've got one that's a big Hulk smash type brawler that just beats everything to death like that. Exactly like that, obviously. And then you've got one that emphasizes ranged sniping kind of attacks with its big lightning strikes. And then you've got one that has its extreme speed and maneuverability on its side. They all control differently and play differently and are also different to fight against. They require you to adapt your tactics whether you're playing as the monster or fighting against them. Which is, which is good. It would have been very easy for the different types of monsters to just feel more or less like reskins of the same enemy. They avoid that very well. And of course, as the title suggests, as the match goes on, the monster can evolve from the starter stage 1 up to the maximum of stage 3. The monster evolves by hunting down, killing, and eating wildlife. The more wildlife you eat, the closer you get to evolving. You evolve, you become stronger, more powerful, and a more dangerous threat to the hunters, and you require them to use their tactics even more and adapt their strategy to a more powerful enemy. And then, of course, there's the wildlife that I just mentioned. Now, I really like this part of the game. Basically, on every map, there's AI-controlled wildlife that'll just kind of wander and just go about their day. Some are dangerous and will attack on sight. Others are mostly harmless but will attack if provoked, and some just kind of go about their day and don't cause you any problems at all. This is a great idea because not only can they throw a wrench in the plans of the hunters and the monster attacking you while you're trying to set something up or while you're chasing the monster, but they can also even play into the direct confrontations between the hunters and monsters, as both sides can try and use the surrounding wildlife to their advantage to help them against their enemy. After all, some of the monsters on this game's maps can be very intimidating and can even be a pretty serious threat to the player as the monster even, and it can be in your best interest no matter which side you're on to try and use the wildlife to your advantage. It, it all just adds an even bigger layer of tactics to a game that already is surprisingly deep when it comes to strategy and using your environment to your advantage. And I really give the game a lot of credit for that. So yeah, on paper, 
This is pretty much my favorite game ever, and I'm not even really exaggerating all that much. The concept is amazing. There's nothing to not like about this game's concept. Unfortunately, I can't say the same thing about the game's execution. Don't get me wrong, it's a good game. But I just don't find myself enjoying it like I thought I would. Let me, let me explain. The very nature of the game is that it's, you're hunting. You are hunting this monster. And hunting involves finding it, tracking it down, using environmental clues to figure out where the monster is. Unfortunately, this can result in pretty frequent and sometimes pretty long stretches of downtime where not much happens where the monster is just kind of feeding on wildlife and the hunters are just kind of running around the map trying to find them. And I understand that, that because of the game's mechanics, there's not really a way around that. But it doesn't change the fact that these stretches can be kind of boring. And it can result in a lot of matches that are two or three minutes of just awesome, intense action, followed by five minutes of just kind of wandering around looking for the monster or eating wildlife to evolve. And then two minutes of amazing intense action and then five minutes of downtime. I understand that there's no way around that. That was probably even part of the developer's intention. It's part of the gameplay. But it doesn't change the fact that it results in, in bursts of awesome fun broken up by kind of enjoyable. And there are other modes beyond the standard hunt mode that do a slightly better job of breaking up that routine and keeping the downtime at least a little more interesting. There's one where the hunters have to find and destroy a set number of monster eggs while the monster has to protect them and try to kill the players. Or there's one where the hunters have to find and extract survivors from a monster attack on a camp or something. These modes add little objectives to vary up the gameplay and at least provide something to be trying to do during what would otherwise just be downtime until you can find the monster. Alright, and now on to the evacuation mode I mentioned. The way I just said it made it sound like a negative. It's not. I love the evacuation mode. I think it's Friggin' brilliant. Let me explain. What it is, is it's basically a sort of semi-campaign, which basically has you playing through five missions back-to-back -back in sequence. Five multiplayer matches, which doesn't sound terribly exciting. But the clever part is the outcome of every mission affects the one after it. And I really like that concept. For example, there are some that have you defending a power generator for a dam from the monster, right? If the monster destroys this, this power generator, the dam is destroyed. And then, you know, poisonous eels will swim through the wreckage where they were otherwise being held back by the dam. And in the next match, there will be poisonous eels that will be swimming through the water that will attack players that enter it or vice versa. You could end up in a rescue mission in the evacuation mode, and if the hunters successfully complete it, they will have an AI-controlled survivor companion that will follow them around. It's, it's a really clever idea and adds a lot of replay value to the game. And it also goes above and beyond the normal campaigns that we get in these sort of multiplayer-centric modes that are nothing more than dressed up matchmaking. <laughs> Time to fall. <laughs> Sorry. It, it, it shows at least a little bit of effort was put in and it adds a lot of variety and replay value into the game. And I, I really love it. I love that concept. And of course, all of this is also available for offline play against bots. Should your internet be down or you just decide you don't want to deal with people online for a little bit, which is good. 
It always disappoints me when I see an online focused game like this that doesn't give the option for bot support. <laughs> Titanfall! <laughs> Again! So sorry, allergies. I can't help it. So yeah, in a lot of ways, I love everything on offer here with Evolve. I love the mechanics, and I think the evacuation mode is a brilliant idea. Unfortunately, for some reason, the whole thing just doesn't hold my attention like I thought it would. Part of the problem I'm having might be that there's just not a lot of game here, really. I mean, sure, there's a decently sized selection of maps, but there's only four modes that you can play through on those maps, and there's really no other content outside of these game types. The evacuation mode mixes things up by adding incentives to try and win, rewards for doing so, and punishments for failing, but it's still just dressed up versions of the same four modes on the same handful of maps, and it can start to get repetitive pretty quickly. It doesn't help that the progression system doesn't have a whole lot of meat to it. Granted, it does let you unlock additional characters for each of the classes who all have slightly different loadouts and who all play a little differently from the other characters in their classes. But beyond that, all the progression really unlocks you is badges, different foregrounds and backgrounds for badges, which might I add are the extent of the customization here, really. There's not a whole, there's almost nothing to the customization, really. Add all of that to the fact that the main game mode, Hunt, has a lot of, of downtime to it that isn't terribly exciting, and you get a game that feels really light on content. It feels like there's not a whole lot here, and it just doesn't hold your attention very well. It doesn't help that I consistently had some connectivity issues with the game's servers. I had very long load times trying to get into games during matchmaking, sometimes pushing four or five minutes just to get into a match. And when I did finally get into the matches, I frequently got notifications telling me I had poor connectivity to the servers and that it would negatively affect the gameplay experience, which sometimes it did. I suffered from a decent amount of lag in many of my matches. And at first I thought that this might have just been my internet connection until I booted up a couple of matches of Battlefield 4 to try and test that and had no problems. Which leads me to believe that Destiny's launch is a little rocky with its servers. Not Destiny rocky, it's functional. You can still get into a match. But don't be surprised if you get some lag during the matches. And don't be surprised when you have to wait three or four minutes to get into a match. Alright, so now that I've talked about the mechanics, how it works, and what I like and don't like, let's boot up the game over here so I can give you a run through and show you how it actually plays. Now I'm going to be playing it from the perspective of the hunters because that's how I prefer to play it. I'm not a huge fan of the monster gameplay to be honest. I, under I understand why other people are, it's just not my play style. But if you get the game I definitely encourage you to experiment with all the different classes as hunter and monster to try and find obviously what fits your playstyle best. Now, with that out of the way, let's take a look at how it plays. Alright, so here we are. We are searching for a game right now. I don't know how long it's going to take. The matchmaking can be very hit or miss. Um, one thing that I do want to go over real quick is how the game gives you the option to prioritize between the different classes before you jump into multiplayer but I just figured that I should give a heads up that that is kind of hit or miss in my experience. It does not always do the best of jobs at actually matching you into a lobby where your preferred role is available. So I don't really know how that works. It's supposed to prioritize based on how you rank them. It doesn't always seem like it does. So we'll just see if it did here. I hope it did. The matchmaking to get into this lobby was actually quicker than I'm used to, but we'll see how the actual loads go. That's where it really gets you. 
load times can be anywhere from 10 seconds to 3 minutes, depending on when the game decides it wants to play nice. So now, we wait, I suppose. Oh, no, look at that. Now we don't wait. Or maybe we do still. We'll see. And I, look at that, I'm the trapper. So it actually worked out this time. All right, what perk do we want? These are perks that you can unlock as time goes on that just give you little boosts, extra damage, Quicker jetpack recharge, more jump height, um, jetpack recharge, I think. It drives me up the wall when I don't have jetpack. Oh boy, he's going to be a wraith. We need to kill him quick then. The wraith, I found, is usually pretty easy to take down if it's a stage one or two, but once they reach stage three, they're freaking brutal. All right, well, we've actually had remarkably good luck with load times so far, which is good. It's good. It's not eating up space on my camera anymore. <laughs> the last couple of times I tried to film this, I ended up running out of space on my camera from just waiting. Mm, not really, but take up a lot of space. You get the point. Load times can be really long. Here we go. This is how every match opens. You get a little mini cutscene thing with a little dialogue like this, and then you actually jump down onto the map, which is admittedly a really cool way to spawn. I actually really like it. Watch. It's cool. And down we go. All right, team. Come on, Daisy. Lead me to the monster. Daisy's really useful because she'll actually sniff out the monster and track it down. I'm quite a fan of, of that NPC. She's the special ability for the... the first tracker you unlock, which is still my favorite tracker, personally. I can't live without Daisy. She's helpful. Alright, so there you can see if the monster kills some of the wildlife that will be running around, which it has to do to evolve, it will attract birds that are essentially buzzards or vultures that will actually chase down the uh, the carcass to try and feed on it that can warn you as to where the monster is. And there you just saw I killed a rare bit of wildlife, which if you kill the rare ones, you will actually get a stat buff, like faster movement speed, or um, faster reload times, more damage, things of that nature. Oh boy, we are getting split up. As you saw there, some of the wildlife will just flat out ignore you unless you mess with them. And some of them will attack on sight, and there is the monster. Where did it go? I need to harpoon it before it can get away. What the? Oh great, I had one of those stupid little monkey things chasing me through the whole fight. You! There. 
What buff do I get? Extra damage. That's good. Because the Trapper does not do a whole lot in terms of damage. At least by default. Oh boy. Thank God for Charter. <laughs> Alright. Last we saw the monster, it went over here. This is the downtime I was talking about earlier. There's a lot of running around and following footprints and birds to try and find the monster. And sometimes it can be really uneventful. Other times there will be loads of wildlife and you've at least got stuff to shoot at. Hopefully we can find this guy before he manages to evolve to stage three. This giant thing needs to go. Back off. There we go. Alright, did we find the monster? Because it's starting to play more dramatic music like something is happening. Yeah, I'm starting to think we have found the monster. I am behind. Nope, no actual monster yet, I guess. But plenty of wildlife. There is a tyrant in the water. No, there wasn't. That was a plant. Tyrants are freaking deadly, even to the monsters. They're basically giant fish that just eat anything. And I have got to catch up to the rest of the team. One of our teammates is down, actually. Hello. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Back off, you stupid little monkey thing. Great, he is stage three. That is magnificent. We have not even, we have barely caught a glimpse of this guy the whole match. And he is already stage three. And what stage three means, at least in this, in this specific mode, the default hump mode, is when the monster reaches stage three, it can destroy the power relay, which is game over for the hunters. Of course, the monster can also win just by killing everyone, but this is kind of the end objective, I guess. And also you. Setting up some harpoons. Move, Daisy. Need to cover all the entrances and exits. Alright. So now we've got basic coverage of the relay with a thousand mines and harpoons. So... We might actually be able to defend here. And there it is. Alright, this is either going to end extremely poorly, or we're actually going to find a way to pull through this. Right now, we're actually hurting it really well. This might actually go well. Great. So now not only am I down, but he launched me all the way over here. Daisy, 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 Daisy. Have we Daisy? I gotcha. I gotcha, buddy. 
All right, that was really, really close. That almost ended pretty badly right there. And I am extremely dead now. Magnificent. Now I gotta wait a minute for the dropship to come in so I can respawn. And our medic's about to die to... Crap. Well, that didn't end well. He killed everybody. Alright, let's see how I did at least. I did all right. All right. I figure we should have time to go through at least part of one more here. I didn't just hit leave, did I? Oh boy. Same role, Trapper. What map are we on now? Orbital Drill? Alright, I know this map. We got this. And there we go, with the connection. That doesn't happen often, thankfully. The connections aren't broken in this game. But I have had that happen to me twice now. Which is more than I would like, but better than some other games have been at, at launch. So I can't fault it too bad for that. It's not Destiny server bad or Battlefield 4 bad. It didn't launch like that. But it's the second time I've gotten the disconnect from a match now. So the servers definitely aren't perfect. They're not the worst we've seen, but they're not great either. That said, that was the gameplay of Evolve. So now we're going to go back and discuss some final thoughts on the game here. So yeah, that is basically Evolve. What did I think about it? In a lot of ways, it's a great game. I love the concept so much. And the gameplay is fun when, when stuff is happening, when the game actually plays like you think it would and the concept just works. It's a lot of fun to play. It looks great. The mechanics are, are, the mechanics are good. It's a well-made game. It's just that by the very nature of the mechanics, there's a lot of downtime in the game where not much is happening, and that downtime can be kind of boring. The game has also had some pretty bad server issues at launch. Obviously, that can be fixed as time goes on, but when the game came out, these, these issues were pretty bad. The servers, the server connections were long, load times were really bad, it could take upwards of five minutes to get into a match at times. So do I recommend it? Yes, I do recommend it. But maybe not for $60. If you really have your heart set on Evolve and really want to play it, then go ahead and buy it. You'll probably enjoy it. It's a good game. But if you were kind of on the fence and aren't really sure about it, either rent it through something, Gamefly, Redbox, something like that, or wait for the price to drop 20 bucks. Because as it stands, the, free, the downtime during gameplay and the lack of content really for $60 
makes me a little hesitant to recommend this if you were on the fence. Evolve is a good game, but it could have been a lot better. The final score is a 7.5 out of 10. It's a pretty good game. I enjoyed my time with it. I didn't dislike it. I just thought it would be better. But still, if you really want to play it, go ahead and give it a shot. Everyone else, wait for the price to drop or rent it. See you guys at the next review. Thanks for watching.